Hello, this is Danny Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. This has been a hectic few days, with first losing my longtime canine companion, Scout, and bringing a new rescue dog fully deserving of that term, who is needing a lot of attention. Besides, it is a challenging thing to do Star Citizen content right now. 4.0.1 is making it hard to collect usable gameplay footage, so I could just gripe about how 4.0.1 is troublesome, which... Even CIG is agreeing on, so not much news there. So this is going to be kind of a grab bag of a few things. First, I have a couple observations, having managed to do a little more testing, about the Misk Fortune. First, the initial impression of the Fortune being smaller than the Vulture were accurate, particularly in length. So if fitting on another ship is of value, definitely consider the Fortune. Now the second was that the loaders, just like the loaders on the Vulture, have an auto switch. Now, the auto switch on the Vulture isn't that valuable, since it would just unload one box and then stop because the output tray was full. But with the Fortune, the output is to the external cargo grid, box after box after box, allowing for long did extraction. So here is the interesting thought. Since CIG now has all this code for automatic boxes being added to the grid, why not, in the next pass of the Prospector and Mule, get rid of the ore bag system? Just have them, like the Fortune, fill up regular boxes on a standard cargo grid. That would greatly simplify the entire materials handling code base. The main thing, though, I wanted to discuss in this video is, as I predicted, CSG said in the testing message of the day for Monday, that their goal for this week was to have 4.0.2 ready for testing, with the soon appearance of a 4.0.2 release for testing being something that I had predicted. They didn't say whether it would be an Evocati or wide release, or whether it will be in a tech preview, PTU, or EPTU channel. They also said that they would likely be having a hotfix channel hosting some more 4.0.1 builds. So I thought about maybe making some sense of these terms, and particularly some practical advice about managing disk space and download time. First, what is a build? A build is a process of bringing together all the files that the product needs source code files, art files, etc., into their proper version called the build list. And then it compiles and or processes them while doing various checks that there aren't any references to things that don't exist or other internal consistency checks. And it is generally thought to be good practice to do a build every day, whether you had a particular plan for one or not, just to stay on top of whether your build list is good. Because sometimes it isn't. Every serious tester has seen days when CIG says that they are planning on having a new build for testing later in the day, only to eventually learn that the build failed to pass. Most build management systems just assign sequential numbers to each build, which you see in the patch notes. A release is a build that the company has made available for use by others, whether it is for internal testers, select external testers, or everybody. Now, a patch was a program that made the necessary edits from one release of the software to make it the same as the next release of the software avoiding the trouble of having to reload the entire program. Originally, patches were very specifically written for a particular original and a particular destination build combination. But modern software systems now use what is called a Delta patcher, which can work from any version to any other version. So how does it do this? Well, I cannot comment specifically about the Delta patcher for Star Citizen, but this is the most common method. First, you download a file for the new release called the Manifest. This includes the names of each file in the release. Then, for the small files, it contains the hash value of the contents of the file. And for larger files, it breaks them down into blocks of, say, 64 kilobytes, and the hash value of each block. A hash value is a mathematical formula which processes a block of data and gives a large number, perhaps 256 bytes long. Changing even a single bit will give a radically different hash value. So if the old file or block yields the same hash value as the manifest says the new file or block does, then it is very safe to presume that the two are the same and you don't have to re-download. If, however, the two values don't match, then it is even safer to presume that the two files or blocks don't match and the new one should be downloaded and replaced. I'll come back to this in a moment. A hotfix, in general, is any repair or upgrade that does not require that the system be stopped and restarted. CIG does occasionally do hotfixes on the data center side, and you will generally not be aware of it happening. 
But then there is a more star citizen specific use of the term, and that is the hot fix channel that sometimes makes an appearance, which is a separate full copy of the user side star citizen client with some test changes, but which looks at the same server and database as the live. So persistence in the game world is shared across both hotfix and live and limited only by the Vegas shard rule. Now, every other channel that CIG creates for testing and marketing, which so far I have seen at various times, the PTU, the EPTU, the tech preview, and the 4.0 underscore preview channel. These have their own companion server side processes and database. So persistence in them does not last past their lifetime as an environment. But the important thing to remember is that each of them is a full separate copy of the client software on your computer storage. And each of them, as of now, is roughly 133 gigabytes in size. So if you have a one terabyte SSD on your computer, not unusual for a gaming laptop, then each of these copies of Star Citizen is taking up about 14% of your SSD. And when, for example, CIG might, for example, take down the PTU and you no longer see it in the list of choices in the launcher, the launcher does not remove the PTU copy of Star Citizen from your local storage. It's still there taking up space. And you might think, oh, that's okay, I still have space left. But there is a thing about SSDs that you might not be aware of. The more full an SSD is, the sooner it will fail, and it will store information slightly slower. Getting into exactly why would require a separate video for another time, but this is a little known difference between SSD and old style spinning media drives. So where are your current and possibly your old unused copies of Star Citizen at? They're in your system drive under Program Files, Roberts Space Industries, Star Citizen, and then the name of the channel. In this case, I have an old 4.0 underscore preview copy of the game, which since it's no longer active, should definitely be deleted for space and longevity of my drive. But let's return to the subject of the Delta Patcher. Because of how the Delta Patcher works, it's always faster to be loading into an existing copy of the game, no matter how outdated, since even a well outdated system will still have some unchanged files that can be skipped. So let's say hypothetically CIG announces for open testing a PTU version of the next release. So if I just go to the loader, select the PTU and say install game, the launcher will create a new empty folder here called PTU. It will then download the manifest and seeing nothing here, proceed to download everything since nothing matches the manifest. But let's say instead we take the live folder, copy it, which will take a moment but not too long and rename it PTU. The spelling and capitalization does have to be exact, check if in doubt. Now, when you say update on the PTU channel, it will download the manifest and frankly see that a lot hasn't changed, less will have to be downloaded, and the patch will complete much quicker. Then let's say after a few weeks of testing, CIG announces that they are going to be migrating the 4.0.2 test from the PTU to live. Now you could just let the patcher do its thing and then later delete the old PTU folder, but you could be even more proactive by renaming the live temporarily and then renaming the PTU to live. And then there is very little for the patcher to do. There's another reason to always be doing this by making copies of the older version and then patching into them. It has to do with your settings, such as, for example, your key bindings. When you copy over the old game copy, you also copy all these settings so you don't have to recreate them. If you let the patcher create a whole new copy, it obviously won't have those key bindings. So with a little planning, you'll be ready to play the newer and hopefully eventually better 4.0.2. Anyway, while I'm here, it's a good time to talk about something else about file management, and that is cleaning out the shader cache. So go to your system drive and then look at the users folder. In it, you should find a folder for each user, as well as the public folder for shared use. Look in the folder for your username, and then if you haven't already, change the view to show hidden files, and you will see a folder called app data. In there, look for a folder called star citizen. And inside of there will be one folder for each build of the software you installed or upgraded to. And yes, these also will be hanging around forever, just taking up space. 
So one thing to do here is to get rid of the oldies. Now, inside of each of these, there's a folder called Graphic Settings, which contains, well, your graphic settings, and also a folder called Shaders if you're using DirectX 11, and a folder called Vulkan Shaders Cache if you're using Vulkan. Now, there are occasionally problems with the graphic glitches, but they're solved by deleting these two folders and allowing the game to re-optimize the shaders. Not so much as before, but recently I did, as some suggested, and upgraded my NVIDIA drivers and set Star Citizen to use DLSS 4, and it looked horrible until I deleted these folders and have the game re-optimize the shaders using the new drivers. So if someone is offering you advice to clear your shader cache, this is what they are talking about. And that is how you do good storage housekeeping in Star Citizen. A little effort for a much cleaner system that will run faster and last longer. Now for an update on our giveaways. First, we have the Captain's Giveaway for the pair of VKB Gladiator Space Combat Edition joysticks. And I will be creating a new skills contest for channel members to go along with the Invictus Launch Week. Look for an announcement video about it. And then the IAE Week Giveaway this year for the shiny stainless steel serious shipping ship, the Star Lancer Max. And then the Grow the Channel Ship Giveaway at 20,000 subscribers for the winner's choice of either the marvelous multi-role multiplayer mining meta, the Arasta, or the Bainu Big Box Bargain Bazaar, called the Merchantman. One entry per video, members are entered automatically. Everyone else just subscribe and comment, somewhere including the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the activity that is often done by devs every day just to stay up with things. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond with Ray's Guide.